Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome home to USA Global TV and Radio, where we provide world-class education, inspiration, and hope. And sometimes we even have a little bit of fun doing it. And that's what we'll be doing today. Welcome, welcome. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, and our show today is The Energy Show. And I'm super excited to host this with the star of our show. She's joining us from London, from the United Kingdom. Her name is Kalimba Culverwell. Let's welcome her to the program and find out what she's been up to. Kalimba, hello, welcome. <laughs> hello, Dr. Jacqueline. What a pleasure again. <laughs> it's an absolute delight to see you. And of course, you are the founder of Timeline underscore Travelers on Instagram. That's where people can contact you. Mm-hmm. What have you been up to since last month? Oh, golly. I think just preparing really for a uh, Christmas season and that's fast approaching and having family around. I know you've had Thanksgiving over there in the States. How did that go? Yes, we did. And uh, it's I feel like every day really is Thanksgiving because there's so much to be thankful for. I seriously am thanking God, the universe. I'm just thankful that I am still here another day to be able to hear to do this with you and, and share this space. It means a lot. You know, you mentioned the Christmas and the holiday season. This is the time of year where a lot of things start to change. And I know energetically things are changing as well. But people come in in and out of our lives. And our topic today is Friendships in Flux 2023. What were you thinking about when this topic came to mind? Yeah, I I think it's just something that has been an experience of mine this year, but also something that anecdotally talking to uh, several people, canvassing several people from different walks of life, they've all sort of confided in me and said, oh, wow, you know, these sort of long-term friendships I've had, they're all, they're all sort of changing or they're shifting. Um, and I don't, it's, it's been a bit confusing, I think, for a lot of people. So, so really, I wanted just an opportunity to talk about why that's been a bit of a trend this year, if it, if it resonates with anyone watching, um, in the hope that it might help them. Absolutely. You know, I can relate to what you're sharing. And I think something that comes up for me, maybe for you, maybe for some other people or not, is we, for some reason, have this uh, unspoken expectation that when someone's in our life, they're just going to be around forever. And whatever we do, they're going to want to do whatever we're interested in, they're going to be interested in. But yet that's not the case. And for some time, I had a hard time accepting the fact that somebody was here for a reason. Maybe I was there for a reason. Why do you think we hold so tightly onto this idea of everybody being everywhere all the time? Yeah, I, I, I think on a, on some level, relationships never end. On an energetic, on some energetic level, on some sort of parallel timeline, they they never end. And certainly, if they've been close, long term ones, you have sort of energetic connections to people. Those those cords aren't cut too easily, and particularly if your higher soul self doesn't want to lose that connection. They say people come into your life for a season and for a time, but it still can really shake you to your core if it's if it's someone who's been in your life for a long time and then that sort of relationship seems to, for whatever reason, just not be playing ball in the way that it normally does or it just seems to be changing slightly. 
Absolutely. And, you know, Kalimba, one thing that I've experienced is that in a relationship with two people, one person might not be happy, but yet doesn't express that. And they mm. just sort of disappear. Mm. And one day you're having a conversation and the next day you realize, well, I haven't heard from Susie or Bobby or Betty. Yeah. And then you reach out and they don't respond. And then we're kind of left going, well, I wonder if they got hurt. I wonder if there was an emergency. And no, they just decided to take a step away from us. And that's kind of, wow, it comes with a lot of feelings. What do you think? I think so. I, I think in those sort of situations, particularly, that's that's quite emotionally sort of challenging to deal with. Um, I really think this year what's been happening is there is an energetic shift taking place on Earth um, and we're all awakening to it at different stages, depending on our choices and our beliefs and our decisions, whether to be conscious of it or to expand our consciousness about it. Um, and so what I feel you see happening is that people are kind of leaving your life or, or still being in your life, but just a, a feeling of like not completely being on the same, same wavelength anymore. Um, and like I say, that's, that's really challenging if that's someone that you've come to really rely on or depend on as you know as really a stalwart of your life as a sort of point of security as a point of identification or a perspective in terms of even knowing and recognizing yourself um and and so an understanding about yes wavelengths are changing they might literally not be on your wavelength anymore you might be shifting energetically to different sort of timeline or place and, and this is this is what sort of semi at play is important i think that realization Yes, I agree with you. And I also think throughout the generations, we have different experiences. And I know for myself, I'm 60, I'm going to be 61 in March. I, oh, I wow. look at you look amazing. You look amazing. You were just <laughs> telling you. me you were a spin class instructor as well and <laughs> spinning over Thanksgiving. Incredible. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. But I found that it wasn't until my late 50s that I really got used to the idea to just appreciate people for when they're in your life and how they're there. But mm. before that, I would be very upset if all of a sudden somebody disappeared. And it was usually a guy. It was usually some relationship I'm in with yeah. a man and he just mm. disappears and there's no understanding. But yet, of course, the signs were all there. So my mm. question for you is, when we think about friendships in flux in this year, are there telltale signs that maybe we're not paying attention to that this relationship that we're in is for a limited period of time or is it just whatever happens it happens as it's supposed to be there's no real signs i i think it's a choice about with with every some some relationships i i genuinely think your guides your spirit guides might if you might take them out of your life because for one reason or another um, and because for one reason or another, your higher soul has chosen to now experience life uh, with different people or different energies around you, or, or you just don't need that, or that, that someone being in your life might actually be hindering your, soul, your soul's growth or expansion um, to the next level. I, I don't necessarily, or of course there are sort of telltale signs, it varies from relationship to relationship, whether that is a friendship, whether it's a, a sort of a love relationship, um, but I, but I think, you know, from an energetic point of view, it's, um, it's, it's really about learning to accept, um, and also to be comfortable not having complete control all the time and, and releasing, releasing your need to always know or always have things around you that you can necessarily be sure of because that's that's actually a, a really great spiritual lesson to be to be um going through or experiencing and, and one certainly to be grateful for even though on the surface you might not feel that way or, or be conscious of that in the moment very true. I definitely agree with that. I think something else for consideration is that sometimes 
we're changing or we've changed and the other person is not. And what do I mean by that? Let's just use, I'm going to use a very basic example. Let's say you have two people who are friends. They both graduated from high school and they're both decided they're going to go into some type of hands-on work. And then one of them decides they want to go get more education. They're going to go to college. So now there are two different places having two different experiences. And maybe one person is not feeling comfortable with the other one's decision. Maybe they didn't even bother discussing with each other, or maybe they did. And people are feeling certain ways that they can't seem to get past. This kind Mm -hmm. of thing happens all the time, whether it's personally or professionally. And I think once again, it also comes down to what level of effective communication do you have with the other person? Do you think communication is a factor that is important when it comes to friendships? Oh, oh, absolutely. And, and, you know, and that's why I would really recommend people do your course or, or read your book about uh, listening. Communication is really, but it's something, it's really, of course, it's really important. It's something that we actually do o- on a level unconsciously as well. We're semi always in communication with energies and people around us, certainly people who we're connected to through the heart chakra. Um and you know, people going to university, people moving out of your life, that's that doesn't necessarily mean that the relationship ends or that there isn't that connection there. In fact, you know, distance is an illusion. This idea of separation is an illusion. And so part of that, if you're not really wanting to, it to happen, is also just to realize or come to the realization that actually we're we're always all connected. We really are. Um, and this illusion of dis- this, these illusions of, or, or this idea of separation is is one to get over in order to really sort of come to the, the truth of of things, which is that we are all connected. Yes, there's that six degrees of separation and, and how everybody's mm. connected. And, and I do believe in that. What are your thoughts? Let's say that we won't say you or me, we'll just say someone out there watching or listening, they're in a relationship with someone, it's a friendship, and they know that they're expected to buy a gift for the holiday season. Mm -hmm. And instead, I've actually seen this happen. Instead (laughs) of saying, listen, I don't have the money, I can't... They just disappear because they don't want that pressure of the gift or the holidays, like summer, I found before it's summer, there's a lot of relationships that break up. People say, hey, I'm going to go out on my own for the summer and see what's happening. <laughs> yeah. Hot <there."> girl summer. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hot so, boy summer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what are your thoughts about relationships that will end this year? Maybe they've already ended. Maybe they're in the process. They don't even know it. Or maybe it's going to be before the end of December 31st and then revisiting them at some point in the future? Is it just close the book, bye-bye, or is it let's come back together at some point? I mean, I, th- I think that's everyone's personal decision about they whether they want to keep a connection um, alive with a person in physical reality uh, or not. Uh, and you know, just just to go back to the first example you gave about people just disappearing because at this time of the year there's a lot of pressure to have the money to buy gifts, and rather than communicating um, that they can't afford to or whatever, they they'd rather sort of sort of sort of disappear from <laughs> from someone's life. I you know I th- I think that's why it's really important that we increasingly realise that abundance and wealth isn't just material physical things it's it abundance and wealth and gifts can come in the form of communication they can come in the form of love they can come in the form of presence as in presence your your presence in in a space um and so just you know that as an example is just reason more reason yes to communicate and and but also to realize the wealth that exists that isn't necessarily physically manifested all the time um, in the way that we've in commercial capitalist society become used to experiencing. Um, As far as whether someone wanted to re-engage with a boyfriend or the reason I talk about wanted to talk about friendships in flux in 2023 particularly is just because this year especially there has been heightened um, 
changes in the the earth's vibration and energy and there are waves of people who are awakening to this and and sort of going through different um growth spurts or let's say or ascension or or however you might want to describe it um and so as a result of that people are just naturally not on the same frequency not on the same vibration not on the same vibe and will kind of naturally start pulling apart for sure there's no reason if you choose not to you, there's no reason that you shouldn't come together with them again but a lot of it will it come down to an individual's choice about uh, about their beliefs and and uh their choice in terms of their perspective about how they want to experience this 3d simulation or matrix that we're in called earth i really appreciate that kalimba and what's coming up for me is as somebody who does many shows, many interviews since I started, I found that there are people who definitely are not buying into 4D, 5D, 3D. They're like, hey, this is a chair, this is a table. Yeah, there's really, this there's really different waves of people. And, yes. and, and that's absolutely fine. There is, there is no reason uh, that they should believe in it. It's completely every individual's choice. Nothing is right or wrong it's just a choice it's just a decision um as someone who is experiencing what is being described as ascension symptoms and has gone through um you know another spiritual uh awakening or experiences here i've had a few in my life um since i was quite young um i can tell you it's not an easy path it really is it's a super challenging path because it does um it does ask of you that you change your way of being. So for me personally, my experience is that the way that I would normally manifest things or achieve things, it just isn't happening in the same way this year in particular. Um, and, and so I think there, is, there are stages or lines of people, waves of people who are going through this as well, just to come back to your point and others who are choosing not to yet and that's fine and you know in this lifetime in this incarnation they may decide that actually they really don't want that experience and they they will remain in earth as we perhaps have been used to it for a long time i i appreciate the vulnerability of you sharing what's happening personally and what i'm wondering is as we think about the friendships in flux if you have a certain view on spirituality and ascension and and i have it and then these other two people don't how can we be friends when we have different perspectives i so uh, you know i i think you have to be really accepting of everyone's perspective it's it's just information and uh whether someone chooses to believe in something or not that is entirely their choice. We all have free choice. We all have free will um, in this experience, in this lifetime. I I think where I will say it is sort of challenging or difficult is if you if you have those interests, if you have those beliefs, and and other people don't, it doesn't resonate for them. They don't recognise it. They don't understand it. They haven't had various experiences, um, and actually they sort of resent the discussion about it or they poo poo it. I mean, I'm seeing a lot of stuff uh, on social media and just in the media in general or, or just in conversation about, you know, crystal crystal girls and, and, and spirituality becoming uh, something that is far from what it actually is, which is really to say a re a re-acknowledgement, a remembering a reawakening to your true core spirit self, which by the way, never goes away. We are all that at source. Yes, yes, definitely. And and I think also people are afraid. I think that's mm. why people argue yes. so much is because they're so steadfast in what they believe. They're not open to hearing someone else's perspective because if we are open, that might mean 
that we have to change. And that word change just flips some people out. And so maybe relationships are coming to an end specifically for that reason. Two people are on opposite sides of something and they just can't seem to, to find middle ground. So here's a question I have for you when it comes to friendship. I, I, I just think you described that perfectly, by the way. You hit the oh, nail on the for this. Thank a you. lot of people will be able to relate to that experience. Thank you. Uh, I'm wondering when we think about it, you're friends with someone. I'm just making up a hypothetical situation. You and someone are friends and you like this person, but they're not understanding what you're talking about. They just don't get it. And you don't want to let go of them. So you're giving 70, 80, 90 percent in the relationship. You're continuously the one who's making concessions. How is this eventually going to work for you or anybody who's out there? Do you eventually just say, you know what? I don't like who I'm becoming right now. I need something more from you. And if you can't accept me for who I am, bye. Yeah, I, I'm, well, well, this is what I'm talking about. People just being on different wavelengths and you can be having a conversation and, and, and just not hearing one another on on various different levels actually you're just not talking the same language but actually just not <laughs> on on a sort of on a, in a, if you were to look at it from a different perspective um and that's certainly challenging what i would say is if you're over giving if you're if you're if 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 you're really struggling for to be understood to be heard to be appreciated, to be seen for your core soul self and the other person isn't in that place, that's that's not something that you can hold against them. They're at a different stage of development. They're exactly where they're meant to be. We're all exactly where we're meant to be. There isn't any sort of rights or wrong about this. It's just a case of we're all making our own choices. But what I will say is if you're if you're if things are out of balance, if you're overextending yourself, another person isn't universe the universe life will move that person out of your life what in one form or another or they'll move that job out of your life in one form or another balance balance will come into play and sometimes as it comes into play we're kicking and screaming because we don't mm. want it to happen and then yeah. years later we look back and go oh, okay this is what <laughs> supposed to happen we, we're yeah right because we don't always have the say eagle eye view that our higher soul self will. But the way our higher soul selves or our core soul essence communicates to us is in is emotionally. Like, how are we feeling? By the way, if you're feeling low, that's an energetic vibrational frequency. And if you're at that lower level, you're going to attract more of that. If you are feeling high, you know, a lot of, this is a sort of semi-overused phrase now, but it's about following your joy, following your passion, because you start to vibrate at a different um, level. And it's one that allows you to get into communication and channel forces, spirit, your higher soul self that are able to have an eagle eye view on your life, on, on, on space and time, because it doesn't really exist at that level actually. And so guide you um, in a way that if, if you're just relying on yourself and your physical experience, you're, you're only sort of, you're only kind of getting tip of the iceberg type of guidance in terms of how you should move your life. So, so really follow, follow your happiness. And if you're in something and you're feeling unhappy or you're, it's, it's maybe time to step away for a bit. Take a step back, reflect. Mm. So uh, a follow-up question I have for you about friendships and flux for anybody who's out there who's thinking, you know, this is really triggering some things for me because I haven't been happy with what's going on with this situation or that situation. Mm. We were talking about this on another show yesterday. It just came up for me. How do you feel about being direct? By the way, I just want to let you know this, this, and this are not working for me, or I'm not feeling comfortable with this, or kind of dancing around the subject, trying mm -hmm. to spare the person's feelings, maybe using examples. A friend of mine shared with me that her friend, blah, blah, blah. Are you someone who's advocating for the direct approach or kind of the dancing around, you know, not getting to it specifically? Yeah, I, you know, I think... <sighs> 
so that's for me that's kind of a layered question because i i feel like there are different horses for different courses and a direct approach might work well with someone else whereas with another person it might be seen as confrontational and actually just sort of take you back a few steps in terms of your relationship or your connection in the physical world to that person um I think if feelings are coming up, you're wanting to communicate something, it's always worthwhile just sort of examining why you think they are for you um, and start also looking at your own sort of shadow self or those sort of um, sides of yourself that you maybe don't really want to recognise or examine or look at. But but look at that and look at your motivation equally sort of as try and put yourself in the other person's shoes. But But understand you know that there's also an element of just letting things be and also understanding that things aren't always what you know you might have a, a a problem or an issue with someone but it might not actually really be that that's the real root cause for um you know upset or uh sort of disruption in the relationship i, I always think actually it's very rarely the thing that we say it's about <laughs> That's very true. There's sometimes there's something underneath the subconsciously yeah. that's bothering us. Absolutely. I do feel at this ripe old age that I am right now, I feel like for me, for friendships, it's a, a much wider opportunity because of the internet. So instead of, you know, I remember when I was growing up, it's the people in your neighborhood, it's the people in the high school, then it's people in college. And now we can have friendships that look completely different because of the internet. So I feel very blessed in that I have relationships with people I never could have had before. And they're in different ways. Obviously, if you and I wanted to get together in person, that's not going to be that easy because I'm mm. in this country, you're in that country. But yeah, yeah, we could still have a really good friendship that's not going to look the same same way as if we were getting together as girlfriends every weekend or something yeah. like that. So I, I think that that brings a lot of possibilities if, if people are open yeah. to opening themselves up to maybe using technology to, to have friendships. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I think, I, I think it's, it's been great. It's an, it's, you know, it's, it's a physical manifestation of the way we're expanding our consciousness and our, our knowledge of that we can connect and that we are in connection with, with many people, many energies, many souls. We are all of that one at once. So that's, I, I really see that that's why we're, okay, we, we're in collective agreement in the collective consciousness that, that, this, is, that this is a way that we can, we can manifest that in our physical waking lives. So, so I think it's great. I think with all things, it comes with its challenges. You know, I'm, I'm sort of the generation that was sort of pre, you know, I, I remember being in a bar and a guy would have to come and talk to you in a bar or you'd have to make friends by going and talking to them rather than just using an app necessarily. So there are, there are adjustments, there are changes that we've all had to come to grips with and there are negatives involved with that and, and so I think with all things it's just about having a, a healthy filter in place for how you're going to manage your interactions um, on various different platforms. So true because we also have to have boundaries because there's only yes. so much time so exactly yeah yes yeah. So before we sign off, tell us a little bit about Timeline Travelers and then we'll have a close about Friendships in Flux for 2023. Yeah. I mean, Timeline Travelers is really just a, a discussion around this idea that we can create timeline shifts in our lives. And, and we are, in fact, consciously or unconsciously a lot of the time doing that. So it's, it's just about coming into greater awareness about how to do that how to shift our energetic vibrational levels to shift onto a higher timeline that's more aligned with our core soul frequency and what it is we're here to to do and share or be in service of on on earth in this lifetime brilliant thank you thank you thank you so as we wrap up this episode mm -hmm. of friendships in flux for 2023 what would you like our audience to take away for this, especially as we come to the end of this year? It's going to be December already on I know, Friday. I know. I I'll be seeing you next it. in December. Yes, we'll have a, a Christmas show. Exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think what I'd like to just say to people or have them take away is, 
is take heart because losing friendships, you know, particularly friendships that have become like family and sort of having them change for one reason or another or move out of your life for a little bit is, is don't get too upset about it and don't get too attached to the, the perceived reality of it. Try and shift your perception around what is actually happening and allow yourself to, to be accepting and allow yourself to be in an unknown space because actually it's a space that's calling you up to be stronger as you stand without that person who's who's maybe been in your life and so a part of your identity stronger stronger as you you stand in a new sense of identity a new a, a new a new exploration of yourself um and your experience on earth and don't try not to get too bogged down in the uh, the minutiae or the he said she said or the difficult parts or reliving you know the emotional sort of try and keep more in a space that's that's loving and has compassion for yourself uh, first and foremost also in that sort of situation i absolutely love that and i appreciate it you know it's funny just a, a quick message before we close up when you shared the topic and then i was putting together the the promotion it never occurred to me like my mother was my best friend and i lost yes. her this year so yeah. but but yeah, so people come and go. And for me, yeah. it was an awakening kind of like, oh, this is a person that I, I had a role to take care of and to support. Yeah. And be. But now I have a different role. And so yeah. I think that's the thing. What can we take from the role that we've played in the relationships that we're in and that we've been in? And what is the role that we want to play even in our own lives? Because that's so important before we start bringing other people in. Yeah, you know, I, I think yours is a is a is a great example of how we have these relationships, but they even though your mother is passed over, even though her state or her the level of vibration that she is now on is is one that you can't see with your naked eye, you're still in close communication with her, you're still in connection with her. It's still a relationship in your life. I'm sure you still talk to her. Um, as you go about your day, you still recognize her energy or presence around you at times. And and so that's, an, you know, and, and, and someone doesn't need to die or, or, or you know, they, they can just be sort of moved out of your physical surrounding immediate space. And you can still have that connection, even though they're physically not there. So that's that's a great example of that in terms of the role that we play in relationship with ourselves in relationship with our lives and our, our our passion and other friends you know that's that's a second by second minute by minute choice we can lean into whatever beliefs we choose to to manifest whatever we choose you know experience we choose in life so so um i would just say you know have love have compassion for yourself it's it's easier to sort of generate it for others particularly friends um and and I and I every day have a conversation with yourself. Be conscious, more and more conscious about the role that you do want to play, the, the way you do want to show up for in your life. <laughs> I love that way you just brought that all together. Thank you. And Kalimba, we do have your contact mm -hmm. information here, but for people who can't read it, what's the best way to reach out to you? And who would you like to contact you? I mean, anyone who has any questions or if, if anything that we've sort of discussed today resonates with them, please, by all means, drop me a message um, at timeline underscore travelers and I'll, I'll come back to you. I'd love to hear from you. <laughs> In fact. Brilliant. Thank you so much. And I just mm. like to say people reach out to me and they'll say, oh, I was watching the, the show. I'm like, did you reach out to the, the host? Of this <laughs> no, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> is right here. She wants you to reach out to her. So please do. do. Yeah, please do. I'm curious. Always curious. And I always, yeah, interest, you know, interested, like we say, in connecting um, rather digitally or whatever with people. So you never know where it can go. And we'll be mm. back next month which yeah. is not that far away so no i know it's... <laughs> it's the last tuesday of each month so look for us i don't know what yeah. the date is but Kalimba yeah. will be back and it'll be uh, uh, yeah pre, uh, probably, probably post christmas and pre-new years who knows <laughs> absolutely 
<laughs> we will bring the cheer. That is for sure. And Absolutely. you can find all the shows over on our YouTube channel, which is mm -hmm. USA Global TV and Radio. So thank you so much, Kalimba. Thanks for being here. Thank you, everyone, for watching on the live or the replay. We really do appreciate it. And we wish mm -hmm. you a very happy holiday season. Likewise. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Jacqueline. It's been a real pleasure as usual. <laughs> Great, Thanks, to Great to see you too. Bye for <laughs> now. See you soon. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>